Okay, um, so in these videos we're going to teach you um, how to monitor um, capnography inside a helmet if that's something you wish to do and then we're going to go on to show you how to administer supplemental oxygen with inside one of the Suzy hoods. And um, today we've got Carla who's very kindly volunteered to be our um, patient for the purpose of the teaching video and I have Louise and Sarah, two of our nurse educators, working with me to um, go through this process with Carla. So um, what we've done already is we've put a little catenography or gas monitoring tube into Carla's right nostril and if you're going to use this um, for any duration of time it's important you use a soft tube um, and for comfort we've put some tape underneath the tube over the skin and then it wraps around Carla's ear and comes down her neck. So at the moment the capnography tube is being monitored through the monitor up here which we've got on an anaesthetic machine set up but we do have as well as the capnography and the capnograph trace we also have the inspired and expired oxygen concentration being displayed in the digit field. Now for safety whenever you're using um, CPAP or a helmet CPAP and you're unfamiliar with it you should always apply as much monitoring as possible so we would recommend an ECG and as an absolute minimum a saturation probe that will monitor the oxygen saturations and heart rate. So the next thing we're going to do is apply the helmet and just for vision purposes we'll quickly talk through the different components. We're going to place a CPAP valve and assuming this patient has an infectious illness um, that potentially infects others we'll have an antiviral filter on the outflow of the CPAP valve. It is very important to make sure that the direction of flow from the helmet is the correct one through the CPAP valve. And this CPAP valve here is marked flow from patient, so this is the end that goes on to the helmet. So prior to putting the helmet on the patient, we usually remove the free breathe valve. This just makes it easier for the applicants to put the helmet on the patient and it also makes it um, safer for the patient to breathe until such times as we've connected the gas in the flow. So next Sarah and Louise are going to put the helmet on Carla and what they do is they pull the soft collar to the hard collar and they're going to lift and place the helmet onto Carla making sure that the two ports at the front of the helmet. So at the moment Carla is very safe because the free breathe valve has been removed and the helmet is open to air and we can see here that despite that she is rebreathing a little bit of carbon dioxide. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is connect our CPAP source and in this instance we are using the ResMed Loomis machine and we're going to attach the ResMed Loomis to the gas supply to Carla's right hand side. So next we apply the free breathe valve. When we do this the helmet is going to fill with gas and it's important that we have Louise and Sarah here to apply the straps otherwise the helmet will rise up. So if you want to get the straps ready to apply. So I'm just going to apply the free breathe valve and the helmet will inflate and we may need to adjust the straps. Carla, may I just ask you to sit forward please? And we'll just tighten up the straps at the back. So next we're going to inflate the top cuff and the cuff that goes around the neck, the neck collar cuff. And this can be done with um, a standard um, lower tip syringe or I'm going to use the oxygen or you can use an air supply from the machine and I'm just going to apply that there and we can see the top cushion fill up, this will reduce some of the dead space in the helmet. So finally we're going to inflate the collar cuff that um, goes around the patient neck. Again this improves patient comfort. So next we're going to inflate the collar cuff. So one of the advantages of the CPAP helmet over conventional CPAP and CPAP masks is that with the Suzy hood your patient can actually drink while still in the helmet without breaking the CPAP seal. 
And we're just going to demonstrate that now. What we have here is a fresh 16 gauge nasogastric tube. So we're going to take this nasogastric tube out and it's important to cut off the holes at the end. We'll cut those off now. And we have a clamp here that we're going to apply to the distal end of the nasogastric tube. So next we're going to feed this through the helmet, but actually I should be wearing gloves. That's better. Now we're just going to feed the tube through this little port. So we're going to feed this to Carla's mouth. Is that alright Carla? Uh -huh. And now we put the distal end into the fluid that we're drinking. You can see the water bubbling because of the CPAP. You can have a drink Carla. Now whilst this seems a complex manoeuvre, once patients are used to this arrangement, they actually are very good at managing it themselves, both clamping and unclamping the tube, and advancing and then retracting the tube at the port. So Carla has now been in the respiratory CPAP helmet for around about half an hour. And you can see here that she's got fairly steady respiratory rate at 14. Her end tidal CO2 is nice and stable between 38 and 40, and there's minimal rebreathing with about 4 to 5 percent carbon dioxide rebreathing. And there's very minimal inspired carbon dioxide, or around 5 millimetres of mercury. That's partly, in fact, because we're measuring the back of the nasopharynx. Now, the last thing to note is that when in the helmet or on any other form of CPAP, you have a very high gas flow rate and it's important that the gas is humidified otherwise we dry out the cilia and reduce the ability of the patient to expectorate and clear secretions. In the ResMed Lumis, the humidification comes from this water reservoir which we should be regularly monitoring to check that there's water somewhere between the minimum and maximum levels. Finally, it's very important to remember if we have a viral filter on the expiratory port that water can condense in the filter and we should pay close attention that the filter is not wetting out. Often, I prefer to keep the filter at an angle like that so that you can see the water developing and condensing out at a fluid level which becomes more apparent than if it's in a vertical orientation. Next we're going to look at how we provide supplemental oxygen when inside the helmet. Currently, to maintain CPAP in the helmet without rebreathing, the gas flow is between 40 and 60 litres per minute. If we wish to give Carla 50% oxygen, we would therefore require to run an oxygen flow between 20 and 30 litres per minute, or thereabouts. When you have many patients on CPAP through a helmet, this can put an extra strain on the hospital oxygen supply. And the South Med Susie Hood has been specifically designed to offer an alternative that allows us to deliver higher FiO2s at lower oxygen flow rates. To illustrate this point, we're currently running 15 litres of supplemental oxygen into the helmet and we can see that we're only achieving inspired oxygen concentrations of 32%. So next we're going to apply the Fisher & Pico AirVo2 nasal cannula to the patient. So temporarily we're going to take the hood off, so to do that we're going to deflate the cushion, remove the free breathe valve and now Louise and Sarah can come take the straps and lift the helmet off. We also have to deflate the rear cushion, yeah, all deflated, thank you. So Louise is going to apply the nasal cannula to Carla. It's always best to get someone that does the job regularly to do it. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to put the end of the elbow needle cannula sitting on top of Carla's head. Next we're going to put the helmet on and Sarah and Louise are very carefully going to place the helmet over Carla's head. I'm going to take the tube from the side of Carla's head and we're going to apply it to this port. And we'll show you later in the video, this is specifically designed to fit perfectly into the port here. It clicks in place like that. And now we can apply the straps. We're now going to apply the free breathe valve and the helmet will start to inflate. I'm going to reinflate the head cushion. And the neck cushion and now we're going to connect the airvo to the nasal cannulae. When we connect this the CO2 will tend to zero. What we can see is with a flow of 15 litres per minute of oxygen via the airvo we're actually delivering an FiO2 to Carla of between 60 and 70 percent. That's more than double the FiO2 we achieved when we were running the same flow of oxygen directly into the helmet. Finally, what's really important to note is that we're delivering high FiO2s to Carla of warm humidified gases, ideal for maintaining ciliary function and expectoration of sputum whilst using very conservative oxygen flows and delivering effective CPAP. Carla's now been in the helmet for around two hours. How is it in there Carla? Thank you very much. <laughs>